A new team of chemical weapons inspectors has started work in Syria today. They're civilians and have never worked inside an active war zone. So the U.S. military has been preparing them with lessons learned from Iraq and Afghanistan. For this report, Anna Holligan has been given exclusive access to a U.S. military training base in Germany. You want to see your family again? Yes. All right, you better cooperate. They're being prepared for what could be the worst day of their lives. Come on. Kidnappings. Hostile locals. Incoming fire. This is a taster of what they may encounter in Syria. Uh, the main risk will be that we will be in an area where uh, we're at the wrong place at the wrong time, and maybe we get uh, shelling or there's someone shooting at us. These chemical analysts are used to working in the lab. Now they're entering an unpredictable environment. These soldiers, members of the Ops 4 Battalion on this uniquely modified military base, have been trained to act like the enemy. This is a simulation, it's a training exercise, but it's designed to replicate exactly the kind of situation that they could face in Syria. These guys are experts in their field, they're experts in chemical weapons, but never before have they been forced to operate inside an active combat zone. And if they make mistakes, people could die. The American veteran commander who helped to design these training scenarios drew on his own experiences in places like Iraq and Afghanistan to try to teach the multinational OPCW teams entering Syria how to recognize cultural sensitivities and avoid repeating mistakes of the past. For example, going into homes where only women were present, using dogs in villages. Absolutely. Uh, we, we take the most relevant and most recent uh, challenges that are facing our soldiers in, in uh, combat environments, and we apply them and we insert them into the training scenarios that we do here. Check the site to confirm that there is nothing prohibited on this site. Their mission is to verify the chemical stockpiles before they can be removed and destroyed. This is how they're hoping it will proceed. But what makes a civilian volunteer to do such a dangerous job? I've seen pictures on television where, and the effects uh, of uh, this kind of weapons. And uh, it's easy for me as a father to look at, at uh, those kids that are affected and, and realize that these weapons have to go. They have to get rid of them. So if I can do anything about that and, and help with my skills, I'm more than happy to do it. The idea is that those skills, combined with the military insights they've gathered here, will be enough to keep them safe in Syria. Anna Holligan, BBC News, at the US military base in Bavaria. We can take you to Stockholm now in the Swedish parliament, because joining us from there is Paul Walker, who is about to be honoured with the Right Livelihood Award for his work in abolishing chemical weapons. Thank you very much for being with us. Congratulations on the award, I should start by saying. Can I ask uh, you, you how difficult? Thank you, Lucy. That's okay. Can I ask you how difficult it's going to be for this team working in Syria now? This is a really high-risk operation. Uh, OPCW inspectors have never worked under such threatening circumstances before, but I think I think there's agreement pretty much in Syria, amongst the rebel groups, but also with the Assad government, that in fact there should be no aggressive behavior towards the inspectors. Everyone wants to get rid of these chemicals. So I remain optimistic, actually, that this will go forward quite well. Practically, Paul, how do you get rid of the stuff? You have to collect all the chemicals. That means we have to transport it all within Syria. And that's one of the most dangerous processes right there. Then you have to ship it out of Syria. <clears throat> and by shipment means putting it on a ship from a port in Syria. And then we have to go through a two-stage, at least a two-stage, destruction process, and that will take some time. How do you destroy chemical weapons? You can either, th there are two primary methods. You can either burn them, uh, and that is putting them, put, putting the chemicals, the any energetics or propellants, which we don't have actually in Syria now, through very high temperature uh, furnaces, or you can in fact neutralize them in a wet, wet chemistry process. And that's probably the likely method that will be used on board a ship in the Mediterranean. So that's where they're headed for, Paul. They literally go to a ship in the middle of the Mediterranean and then you get rid of them there. It is. I mean, the, the good news is we have very little live agent. The Syrians have very little live agent. They have 20, 20 tons, more or less, of mustard agent, which is an old blister agent. But beyond that, the other 1,000 tons so that we have to destroy are all precursor chemicals, 
which are really uh, industrial dual-use chemicals, and that's much easier, not so dangerous to handle. So it's actually, it's actually not as difficult an operation as it has been to date in the United States and Russia. When you talk about the danger, I mean, they're working in a conflict zone. There's a civil war going on in Syria. But what about what they're actually dealing with? Is it quite dangerous? It is. I mean, you don't, you, you don't want to spill these chemicals. In fact, it's illegal to spill them in any way. But if you, if you gut them uh, on your body, if you inhaled them, if you touch them very much, it could actually cause some, some damage. But these are, for the most part, as I said, precursor chemicals, which means they're not deadly agents. Uh, if you spilled the mustard agent, the 20 tons of mustard that they'll be shipping out of Syria, that can be dangerous. I mean, if you spilled it on your ankle or splashed it on your wrist or your fingers, uh, that can, in fact, be potentially deadly. Unlikely, but possibly deadly. Paul, you're being honoured today for your work in trying to rid the world of chemical weapons. At the end of this process, how successful do you think the world is right now at, at getting rid of these, these deadly agents? We, we're enormously successful, and I say that with a high degree of modesty. But, you know, we've declared uh, about 72,000 metric tons globally in six or seven countries around the world, now including Syria. We've destroyed almost 60,000 tons to date. It's primarily in Russia and the United States, which are the big dominant chemical weapons superpowers. Uh, and within another decade, uh, all the chemical weapons in the world will be destroyed. Uh, we, we still have to bring in a few countries, you know, and we know there's at least one of those remaining six countries which are not members of the treaty regime, namely North Korea. We know it has a very large chemical weapons stockpile. So the remaining stockpile after Syria will be to go after North Korea to join, which will be, a, I think, a difficult uh, exercise. But finishing destruction in the United States, in Russia, in Libya, in Iraq uh, will be completed within 10 years. Okay, Paul Walker, thank you very much for joining us from Stockholm. Hope you managed to have some fun tonight as well. Oh, Thanks well, for being with us. Thank you very much, Lucy. Ross is with us now. What's Hello, coming Steve. up? Hi, how are you? What's coming up on Global? Well, a couple of things to mention.